we've never done this before, but we're challenging ourselves to boondock for 60 days straight. We're Victoria and Craig, and we live full time in our RV with our two border collies, Leland and Maverick, looking for amazing adventures and boondocking spots that we probably shouldn't be bringing our big rig to. So come along for this series as we find epic off-grid locations across the Western US as we travel from New Mexico to Canada over the next 60 days. This week, we've found ourselves living on lakefront property for free and adding two new tools to our boondocking toolbox. We got some big old horses right here. The thing that always makes us want to stop boondocking and go to a full hookup campground, but we have a solution. Day one, and we're boondocking at Lake Holloman near White Sands National Park. In the mornings, you get the most beautiful reflections on the lake. It's not safe water though, so you don't wanna drink it, but by the afternoon, it gets pretty windy. You can stay here for up to 14 nights, totally free. I mean, check out these views we got. We're living on lakefront property for free. It's amazing. That's why we love coming out west, and it's why we love boondocking. So this morning when we woke up, there was milk all in the refrigerator, like just open and spilt out. So we have a coffee maker that has a little container that holds milk in it and we stuck it in the refrigerator and forgot about it and it did not survive the 1500 mile trip. So I don't know if milk spoils when it's not closed, but it stunk. And so we had to clean all that up. It was terrible. And now every time you open the refrigerator, it's not great. <laughs> so we did get it cleaned up, but we had to use a lot of the water in our tank that we brought to clean it up. And so we're off to a bad start already. All right, so let's talk about these rules, these rules for this challenge that we're doing. Okay, so we're boondocking for 60 days. However, we will still be dumping our tanks. Of course, we cannot go 60 days on our tanks. And we will be moving to different locations because we also get bored if we stay in one spot for longer than like two weeks. We won't be going to any campgrounds with hookups and we're gonna to try to stay at primarily free spots. Although if we find a really cool dry cramping spot that we have to pay for, we might do that. We've had friends join us here at our boondocking spot, Kaylin and Joseph from Open Roading, and we're about to go hiking at White Sands with them and check out Craig's hiking shoes. What about them? Either you're gonna wear flip flops. It's like the beach. The sand is like the beach sand. It's a good point. It's a good point. I'm probably going barefoot anyways. So if you were going to White Sands, would you hike in hiking boots or would you hike in beach shoes? Uh, Which one? Well, clearly oh, well, flip flops. Clearly, <laughs> I think I'm gonna wear sandals too, but my sandals at least have, uh, they have backs. So they're like hiking sandals. It's got them hippy dippy sandals. We only drove because Craig cleaned the truck. Does it look clean it, enough? It, it is so clean, was, except we had cookies and got crumbs in it. <laughs> I was gonna say, you guys have not seen a dirty truck in two years. It passed inspection. We just saw you guys clean here, so it can't be too bad. Uh, no, it's bad. Poor <laughs> <laughs> team. Well, we know what shoe camp these guys are in. I am not in this camp. I just didn't think ahead of time. We're so used to hiking on actual dirt. These are gonna be full of sand. Full of sand. Very quickly. Craig just said he could jump off this cliff all the way down to the bottom if I was holding the backpack and camera. So let's see. Well, I don't want to make it to the bottom though. Well, okay. that's where you're going. <laughs> oh, not as far as I want it. That was pretty far though. I gotta try again. <laughs> it's not good enough. <sighs> All right, competition going on okay. here. Oh! <laughs> okay, let's go. 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> I think that's it for me. Did that hurt your feet? Uh-uh. Oh. <sighs> wow. White Sands was amazing last night, but it's day eight and we are about to go get something that is going to be a game changer for our boondocking setup. Did I miss it? The destination is on the left. Oh. Right there. Oh man. <laughs> Those are heavy. Okay, I'm wondering if you guys already know what it is with the size of those boxes that Craig just put in the back of the truck. If you have a guess, put it in the comments. But mail tip, RV life mail tip for you. If you need something shipped that can't go to an Amazon locker and you don't quite trust general delivery at the post office, you can find these mailing and shipping services businesses in different places. This one's called Direct Mail in Alamogordo. And for like a small fee, usually anywhere from like two to five dollars per package, you can have it shipped there and pick it up. Super easy. So we're at Lowe's right now to get some supplies for the install of the stuff we just got. And I'm going to lock the tailgate and the bed cover because we've got a few thousand dollars worth of stuff back there right now. We don't want taken which reminds me i get a lot of questions about this bed cover it's the retracts one ilmex which you can find on e-trailer who is also sponsoring this video we've actually bought two of these types of bed covers the first one was a different brand it only lasted six months we really like this one even though it was a few hundred dollars more but it comes with sealed ball bearings which helps it last longer it's going on two years now um, it also can lock which is great for a little bit of extra security and people can't just reach in and take stuff out the back of your truck. And it also can open and latch in any position you want it along the rails. You wanna make sure you find the right one for your truck, of course, which you can use e-trailers vehicle fit tool. It'll give you a list of like all of the truck bed covers that fit your truck, or you can just chat with their product specialist and they will also make sure you find the right one. We'll put a link to it in the description of this video if you're interested. It's pretty good. It's getting pretty dirty though. <laughs> So we got the supplies for the install, but we're not gonna do the install tonight or today. It's almost night, it's pretty late evening. Cause it looks like we're losing, well, we are losing sunlight, but it also looks like it's about to start raining. So I don't wanna get into a project and it start raining on us. So you gotta wait till tomorrow, which sounds like a long time, but it's really just a few seconds for you guys. However, it'll be the next day for us. So we'll see you guys then. Day nine and the days are really flying by here at Lake Holloman. It's been beautiful. Weather's been great. Has been beautiful, but let's get to the point. Day nine, big day guys, big day. But before we get into these boxes, these big boxes, let's talk a little bit about boondocking setups. So the reason it's such a big day, we'll back up a little bit. Our first year to boondocking, we started out with just a generator and did that for an entire year. That was our solar system. We got off grid that and way. One 100 amp hour battery. A single 100 amp hour battery. And over time, for the first year, during that year, we pieced some of our solar system together. So we started out with a generator, like I said. Next thing was an inverter. So we had an inverter, the Victron, and a battery and a generator. Around year two, we figured out that we really like boondocking a lot. And we also wanted to be a little more comfortable and not have to hear our generator run all the time. So we put together our massive 2800 watt solar array on the roof of our old RV that's now on the Brinkley RV. So now we are upgrading our battery system. We got some big old horses right here. It's a big old boy. That's a thick boy. It's a heavy boy. He ain't his Wheaties. Okay. All right, so we, should I tell them what we got? 
Yeah. Or show them. You want to show them? Let's show them. Let's show them. We'll, we'll take it out. We'll show you guys. Look at my pug and I. We rented a house when we first got married, and I found this laying in the dirt. And I don't know how, which was like 11 years ago. <laughs> Holy <laughs> smoke. 12. We've been married 12 years. But we probably didn't anniversary. find it the first That's year. That's true. <laughs> so we've had this thing forever. And it it's just still going strong. just pops up every now and then when I need it, I guess. I probably need to sharpen it, though. Yeah. And the reason why we tell you about all of our different setups that we've had over the last almost three years now is because you do not have to have a big setup like we're about to have to start boondocking. You can get out there and boondock with a generator and a battery because we did it for a long time like that. All right, guys, here we go. This is what we got. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so excited. Look at this thing. Look at how big it is. So this is the Epic. It's spelled Epoch, but I think it's pronounced Epic. Guess it how is... many amp hours it is. Put oh it in the comments. God. Go ahead, guess. I didn't know I'll tell you then. Well, tell wait you. a few minutes. You got time to guess. So this is a, go ahead, it's a big battery. Out. Let's see. I can't. See it. I can't. it weighs it. like a, almost 100 pounds, guys. <laughs> You got it, you got it. A moral support over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be clear, this is not sponsored. We bought these batteries, and yes, we spent a lot of money on them. Too much. We bought two of them, <laughs> in fact. So we were considering a few different brands, and this one just ended up at the top of our list. Uh, the reason is, and if you have not heard of Will Prowse and you're looking at upgrading your batteries, Go watch his stuff, super knowledgeable. And watch how enthusiastic he is about this specific battery. Um, so that kind of just put it at the top of our list. Have an 11 year warranty. They have an 11 year warranty. I can talk guys. And um, which are two really great things. So customer service should be easy to deal with being here in the country, not overseas. The biggest thing though is that each of these batteries, we got two, like Victoria said, they're 460 amp hours a piece. So we're going to be just under a thousand amp hours of a uh, battery. So that's going to be nice. We're going to be able to run our AC whenever we want, our heater when we get up in the morning, we can turn that on the, the fireplace and uh, it's going to make it really nice. Also, what's the, uh, the second, second, this second on the list for super nice is that for the quality of battery and the price, you're not beating it. You're not beating it. Go check them out. Again, check out Will Prowse's video and uh, all his stuff he has to say about batteries and solar systems. He's very knowledgeable in it. We will put a link to the ones we got in the description below. And we did sign up for their affiliate program, which is something pretty much anybody can do. And so if you decide you like these batteries and you want to get some for yourself and you want to support our channel, use that link. All right, so we got all the batteries taken out. However, before we can just plop the other ones in, we got some prep work we gotta do. We wanna reinforce this bottom down here, that way nothing falls out or busts through the floor while we're going down the road, cause that would be very bad. They weigh about just under 100 pounds a piece. So we're gonna reinforce this floor with a metal plate that's gonna sit on the lip of the chassis. And then uh, we also bought some metal strips that are in the runner across the front here because there's nothing here uh, that's holding this up other than like some screws and I just don't trust that so much so we're going to reinforce everything for the weight of the batteries. So this is our old reinforcement which is nothing more than a black piece of Luan and it just really was in here to cover up the old battery box compartment. So the batteries wasn't sitting crooked. Need to measure all this again, make sure we only cut once because we do not have enough for extra mistakes. Time. We mostly don't have enough time for extra mistakes because you know every mistake is an extra trip to Lowe's or Home Depot. And I can't find my tape measure, so <laughs> there's that. We're off to a great start. Where is it? I don't know, probably 
sitting is underneath it? here or something. I don't think so. It yep. Yeah. Ta-da! I always know where everything is. My back. <laughs> Old age. So cool trick about tape measures for the people that don't know, which a lot of you probably do. Um, usually on the base of your tape measure. So this guy, they are a specific length. This one I think is three inches and they always tell you on the bottom. Most, I mean, if you get some kind of weird cheap knockoff weird one, then it might not. But um, that way, instead of trying to fold your tape measure and everything, you lock it onto what it is, like it was 65. So now I add three inches, puts it at 68 inches across here. So I know I need to cut a, my metal 68 inches. I'm trying to figure out why Craig hasn't ever told me this in all of my life and just sat there and watched me try to fold a tape measure into a corner. I don't know. Because I, I just know. learned that just now. So when like <laughs> when you do construction and stuff like that, you just you're like everybody knows it. However, I understand now that not everybody knows everything. Like it, it doesn't make sense for everybody to know that unless they've dealt with tape measures a lot. So so we're at 21 and a quarter plus three, so it's gonna be 24 and a quarter for that. And we got some play room, you know, this thing is what, an inch and a half to an inch, inch and a, qu inch and a half. So we got an inch and a half to miss the mark. <laughs> so this is one of my favorite tools. It's not the best tool for every job, but we'll do a whole bunch of jobs. So I keep this with me. All right, moment of truth now. Yep, so this is the side or the part of this tour that we didn't know about. We don't know if this is gonna fit through this hole and be able to get in there. So here we go. All the way in the corner. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, a couple barely. inches. We had a couple inches. Nice. We tested it out with the tape measure and I was confident that it would work. And so that was gonna be an I told you so to me if it didn't. So I'm feeling pretty good. So it's gonna sit on this lip right here, and then it's gonna run across the front all the way down to this other lip and catch over there. The only part that's not ideal about it is that the wall isn't a 90 degree angle. So you kind of lose a little bit with the way this angles up, but you definitely wanted an L bracket so it'd be more rigid and not flex as much up and down because that would have defeated the purpose then. <laughs> To make it a little bit more rigid in the middle, we're gonna add this flat piece of metal chunk to the middle, and this will sit on top of that just to kind of help with any bouncing. Oh, that's gonna be good. Feels a lot better? Yeah, I think so. Hey. Slide it, get it the right direction and then slide it over. It was gonna be close, remember? Nice. Okay. So we thought they came with mounting brackets for the bottom down here, it doesn't. So we're gonna make our own mounting brackets. I'm just gonna cut some of this leftover L bracket that we had and use some bolts that we got. Just bolt it to the floor. You're really supposed to have these fully charged before you connect them in a series. Um, so we're just gonna hook up one to the RV, let the day finish charging it up, and then tomorrow we'll disconnect it after it's fully charged, hook the other one up, wait till it's for, fully charged, and then connect them in a series. The other thing that is pretty cool about these batteries is they have Victron comms in them, which means you don't technically need the smart shunt because the battery will send the like real time, real information straight to your other Victron devices like the Cerbo and the inverter. And so it's pretty high tech stuff, it's cool. We'll keep you guys posted tomorrow, as in in a few seconds on how all that goes. And we're also gonna show you the other thing that we added to our boondocking toolbox, which is thankfully much, much cheaper. So see you tomorrow, sun will be setting soon. 
So now that we've talked about our power situation while boondocking, let's talk a little bit about water because water is probably water conservation is probably the hardest part about boondocking. So to top off our water tanks, we use a water bladder, which I'm sure you guys have seen it if you've watched our videos long enough. But it's a 60 gallon water bladder. Things I like about it is that it can just fold up and go into tight spaces when you're not using it because space is the number one issue, I think, when you RV full time. <laughs> so we got the water bladder. We use this and a water hose and we do pretty good. Oh, and we take our filter. We can't refill our tanks forever because our gray tanks are only 90 gallons. So we have to dump, but we can last close to two weeks with them. <laughs> Honestly, the thing that always makes us want to stop boondocking and go to a full hookup campground is we just end up wanting a long, hot shower. I mean, I've resorted to wearing hats because my hair needs to be washed so bad. Me too. But we have a solution. We got a Planet Fitness membership. So now we can go and shower at the Planet Fitness. And as you guys know, I've been trying to lose weight, which I'm also down to tw uh, down 21 pounds. <laughs> so that's going good. And now with the Planet Fitness thing, I can work out and get a shower and not use up all our RV water. Yeah, Craig's been using all our water lately because he works out so hard every day and gets really sweaty and then he has to rinse off. And this is why we're using up all our water. Well. <laughs> I don't know what else to do. I don't want to be obese. Hey, it's okay. We've got <laughs> solutions. we got a Planet Fitness membership before. We've never done this before. If you have a Planet Fitness membership and you RV, van life, whatever, let us know in the comments. Let us know how you like it. We're about to go. And if there's nobody in the locker rooms, we'll take you along, kind of show you what this one happens to look like in Alamogordo. All right, I'm feeling fresh and clean. We got a little workout in. The showers, so it seems House Planet Fitness is they're usually set up with the showers on one side and changing rooms on the other. My shower is pretty decently clean. How was yours? I just walked around butt naked. No, you didn't. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, it was pretty clean. I mean, they're older, it seems, but did the job. I wore my shower shoes. Don't get me wrong, still wore the sh shower shoes, but uh, I feel nice and clean. It was good. Yeah, I'm tired. But will we really make it our 60 days straight of boondocking? You're going to have to keep watching to find out. So hit that subscribe button. I'm already kind of wanting a camera. <laughs> We're only, what, 10 days in? Oh my goodness, 50 more to go. Give us a thumbs up for encouragement, please. And yeah. uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. See you next week. You can go. Ready? Go. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like I was in the air for a good minute there. <laughs> you were. <laughs>